Um, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, this is the ninth edition of the Romanian Film Festival of Seattle. And um, this festival is done in collaboration with the Romanian Film Festival Arizona, which is also having their second edition of the film festival. And it's also done with the support of ARCS Detroit. Um, this is a discussion, a panel discussion about uh, the documentary Us Against Us uh, by uh, director Andra Tarara. Uh, Andra is an artist working in cinema, video arts, and photography, and this is her first feature film. Uh, we're also happy to uh, have this discussion uh, moderated by Alina Haliliuk, uh, who is a professor of communication at Denison University. Um, us Against Us is uh, now available to stream online um, all over the U.S. through uh, November 27th. Um, so please join us uh, for this Q&A and then also uh, join us for the following ones. We'll have uh, many more discussions in the following days. Thank you. Thanks, Gabi, and um, welcome everyone. And uh, hi to everyone who sees us online. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. This is uh, also my second time with, with the festival. Um, and it's especially exciting to be talking with um, women, women filmmakers and artists, visual artists in Romania, um, and to see the development of um, their work. And we are privileged to see that that work today. Um, you probably have watched already Us Against Us. Um, just a little bit more to brag about it. It premiered at uh, Jilava, the International Documentary Film Festival in the Czech Republic. And um, it is Tarara's film, first fil feature film um, that she made in collaboration with her father. Um, and also it won the Romanian Film Festival, the best Romanian film festival um, at Astra Film Festival in 2021, um, also being part of many cultural initiatives that aim to fight against the stigmatization of mental health. Um, Andra, thank you for being here and, and open and willing to talk with us, especially as it is very late right now in Romania. Um, and as you were just sharing before this, you, you've been filming all day, so really, really grateful to have you here. Um, and I thought that it would be a good idea to start by um, having our audiences get to know a little bit more about how you see yourself as an artist and how you see your work. Um, so I want to start with, with a question about that. Um, and I wonder if you can share um, what does it mean for you um, to be, an, as, you call, as you call it, an artist working in cinema, video art, and photography? Uh, rather than um, identifying as a filmmaker alone. Um, and uh, you have this combination of degrees finishing in film as an undergraduate, and then you went and did a master's in visual anthropology in Romania. And I wonder um, if you can talk about how that, if at all, has impacted how you see yourself as an artist. What did, what did anthropology and social science bring to to you that that you wanted to have. Hello, first of all, thank you for having me here and uh, having the film uh, screened uh, online uh, in the USA. And um, yeah, for me, it's kind of new as well because until very recently, I used to present myself only as filmmaker. But at some point, I had to send my short bio for a, a project that was not cinema related. And I realized that it's not quite accurate anymore, presenting myself just as filmmaker, because uh, in the last couple of years, a big part of my work um, implied photography and film and uh, video, but uh, not only for cinema. Uh, I, I worked for uh, theater projects for uh, I'm working uh, on a museum. I have a full time job actually in a museum in Bucharest. Um, and I enjoy very much switching between projects and uh, I don't know, video art projects and uh, theater. And uh, actually everything goes back to a point when uh, I realized that now I really 
can choose my own projects. And I felt the need to, I don't know, set some principles. And um, I realized that for me as an artist, it was, it, it is um, more important to work on projects I really care about and uh, which are very in line with my ideas and my thoughts and um, which I think that are, I don't know, uh, relevant for the society rather than working just in film, but not only in projects that really interest me in that way, I don't know, um, feeling their social impact and uh, really being in line with my thoughts. Uh, so this is the choice I made uh, a while ago and I'm sticking to it because, uh, I don't know, it's very satisfying uh, seeing myself in uh, collaborating with other artists as well and uh, in uh, different contexts of work. And um, this year, actually, I made a, a video installation for a theater play. And um, yeah, I like, I like a lot to collaborate on other artists' uh, projects and um, see my work as part of a bigger picture and for other audiences. Uh, um, but then again, uh, I still work with video and photography mainly. So <laughs> not only, but mainly uh, these are my tools for the other projects as well. As for anthropology, well, after I finished the film school, um, I have this BA on cinematography. Um, I got more interested in documentary. And uh, at that point, uh, the film school in Bucharest didn't have anything on documentary. Now there is an MA program, but at that point there was nothing. Um, and uh, I don't know, I felt like the need to discuss the questions I had about how do you talk with people? How do you get in a community as a filmmaker? Um, I don't know, ethical questions. How do you relate with people? What are the risks? Um, so yeah, uh, that's why I went to, to this MA program and uh, I think it was a very nice choice because uh, it kind of uh, responded to some of my questions and uh, um, I didn't want uh, to be an anthropologist at all, but uh, as a filmmaker, it was a, a very good experience for me. It's so um, rewarding, I'm, I'm imagining, to be able to be at this point in your career where you feel like you can choose your projects. And I, I would think, I, I wonder, I guess, also just to follow up a little bit on your work at the museum, um, can you share a little bit about just, I don't know if you would like a little bit about that. I, I imagine I imagine museum work to be a lot about curating. I mean, I can, I can kind of see parallels with the work of curating spaces and stories and but is that what you're doing and what museum are you working for uh it's the romanian peasant museum and i'm working on the image archive image and sound archive and we are like four young people working there and we're doing everything i mean for from organizing the archive uh, to working with the public with researchers or artists or uh, people who come to, to see the archive uh, with students as well and yeah curating also and making exhibitions and projects uh, using the archive that's great and and where can um i guess this question is more for the romanian public who is now uh in bucharest but uh your theater project your video installation can you tell us a little bit more about that the the recent one you just mentioned uh, in theater you mean yeah, the, the one you just said that you, you've just done a video uh, installation in theater. Uh, yeah, uh, the play is called Amortus, Amortus. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's part of uh, um, in Bucharest is this thing called uh, like political theater. It's a theme uh, um, that uh, 
I don't know, I think for 15 years now, um, mm. identify themselves with this term. And uh, yeah, of course, all art is political, but when they started, it wasn't that obvious. And uh, um, yeah, so uh, in this context, uh, this year, I'm, I'm collaborating with them for many years now, like filming teasers and uh, uh, the plays and um, um, taking photographs. Uh, but this time I'm part of the main team uh, working as an artist. So <laughs> Immortals by Bogdan Georgescu is the show. Thank you so much. Um, that's so exciting to just kind of see, see I imagine you moving, right? <laughs> right now, I wish I were in Bucharest and able to see all of this work, right? But um, if some of our viewers um, are seeing this from Bucharest, hopefully they can come and see the play uh, Immortals and, 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 and visit the museum as well to, to see more of your work. Um, you mentioned that anthropology took you to documentary and obviously, you know, we are talking about a, a documentary that you've made. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about um, why you turn to documentary as a genre and why you're staying with it? You made a documentary about also your, your grandmother's death. You collaborated in other or co-wrote and co-made other documentaries. Uh, what draws you about this genre and keeps you? Um, it's kind of a difficult question because um, I think I, I started from very little. I mean, I was like nine, ten years old when I started to take photographs and I was taking photos of whatever I liked. I mean, I have photos of my toys and of places I liked and uh, of my friends when I was little. So it was for me a way to just I don't know, preserve memories and keep with me things that I enjoyed. So I think documentary was kind of like the first form, the, the first way to discover film in the first place, the first way to discover photography. I mean, it was the main role for me um, way before seeing it as a career or even as an art. I mean, it was like a second language starting this little um, and now um, I'm very interested uh, in working with on one hand with found footage material I like a lot using things that already exist and starting from something and um, with reality I think that it works the same I mean there, there already is something in front of your camera. Uh, in fiction, it is different. I mean, you start with a blank page and, uh, and you're imagining everything from zero uh, and it kind of scares me. <laughs> um, in documentary, it's a process of discovering. Um, it's, I think it's more about the process, you know, because in fiction, like the film, it's like the ending point of this process. While in documentary, I feel that the documentary is the process itself. And I find it like a lot more stimulating. Of course, there are ways to, to make fiction as well in, I don't know, alternative independent films uh, can, can work very differently. But I don't know, the traditional way to, to make fiction film, um, yeah, I don't quite fit there. <laughs> Um, and I, I can see how documentary can be, I mean, both are very collaborative ways of, of working, but the co-authorship, right, the invention process is happening gradually and you discover it, right, and um, can definitely see that in your, in your film and um, I wanted to, I wanted to talk a little more about that, right, because you started this film us against us with an idea where you wanted to um, trace the the 
shared aesthetic sensibilities between you and your father. Um, and then you ended up with a film where that's still there, but is not center stage. Uh, what becomes center stage is what he brought up, which is in discussion of um, uh, mental health and his mental health in particular. So um, I wanted to ask a couple of questions about, first of all, just where did this idea, the original idea of the shared aesthetic sensibilities, like where did that come from as a as, as a topic of inquiry for you in this documentary format. Um, and then also a second question about how did you experience that, that turning around kind of, <laughs> of, of the topic um, while you were making the documentary? There is this, there is that beautiful scene, you know, that we can talk about more later or have audiences on. Uh, you know, when we have the Q&A letter um, of, of when, when you have this discussion about plans with your dad. Um, but I want to hear a little bit more about um, how did that feel to you when you were making the film um, that we don't see in the documentary? Um, the documentary is actually part of uh, the MA uh, we talk about, the anthropology, the visual anthropology studies, and uh, it was part of my uh, final project. Uh, and uh, in the beginning, uh, actually everything began with me finding these VHS tapes. Some of them are used in the film. Uh, part of my family archives, uh, most of it uh, filmed by my, my father. And um, yeah, I found it, uh, of course, there are a lot of images with me, little, and I think that when I was little, we were watching them regularly. And uh, of course I knew these tapes existed, but at some point with my father's uh, illness and that um, everything went up in a box and we forgot about it. And I, uh, I found them again after I finished film school. Um, and they looked kind of new to me because um, there were like a lot of memories I didn't remember anymore. Uh, and uh, it was a very bright childhood that was very much forgotten for me. Uh, and also that um, at that point, I was really thinking that filming is something that is very mine, that I discovered it myself as a teenager. And uh, I really thought that it's my thing. And um, yeah, because I've totally forgotten everything that was before. And rediscovering these tapes was huge for me because seeing my father filming, uh, yeah, everything clicked. I mean, uh, all this part well, when I was little and asking him to film, uh, to let me film as well. And uh, all that interest that began to develop back then. Um, yeah, that's when I discovered it. And that's how the film started. Uh, in the beginning, I imagined that ho the whole project, I mean, the film and everything else uh, uh, in the project for finishing my MA would be about family archives and about home movies and uh, about both filming and preserving these family memories. Uh, so yeah, that's how it started, but step by step, uh, it's uh, developed into something else, uh, which was hard to, to deal with. I mean, I felt very insecure about it and I had no idea where is everything going. It helped a lot, the fact that I didn't have any pressure to to finish a film or I don't know, the, the film has like zero budget. And uh, until very late, it had no producers and it wasn't really part of the film industry. Um, and um, yeah, that was no pressure. So uh, it helped a lot to deal with the, all the insecurities. And uh, yeah, it was very clear for me that I want to, to make my father part of this process. 
So, um, yeah, I felt insecure, but in the same time, I was reminding myself each moment that I want this and I want to let things um, get into a chaos and then uh, let my father, I don't know, it seemed the right thing to do if I if I'm starting this film with some ideas as and some things I want to bring into discussion it seemed the right thing to let my father as well to bring his own questions and his own uh, things of interest yeah thank you for that and I I I love the way also how you know when you went back it seemed to be that you're that that and i don't know if that's the case but the place looks similar the place of your childhood right you have a lot of scenes of you as a child in the countryside and by the way giving very astute directorial you know suggestions the the sideway filming looked much better than the straight front you know forward um the frontal camera um so um it strikes me when i watch the film um and i would be curious to hear also later how other people saw that that the um you give a very um visceral sense of the place right that you take a lot of time with long shots um long takes with um letting the viewer just observe you know his house the garden you know like the, the home video style is there but then there's this invitational um quality uh an observational quality right of the place not just of the man uh or of of the man in the place <laughs> uh and of the relationship in the place and um one of the things that comes up for me in in seeing the place is how much this film allows us to reflect on 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 loneliness right and isolation and and kind of the ways in which your your dad has been was struggling with that both the mental isolation but also kind of it got it gets me as a viewer to be thinking of the the larger social political isolation right that that he was living in um the isolation maybe that gender identity kind of brings you have this scenes of male sociality you know with his colleagues there these memories of him and his father right um and so um i i wonder how you um negotiated that or how much like you, you constructed that or that kind of came just naturally for you and to what extent did it surprise you with any kind of new insights that that you didn't expect in having um about your father and his life um Actually, uh, there is a part of observation filmed by me, but most of it is filmed by my father himself. And uh, uh, it was him showing me his life. And of course, he, he might have imagined that uh, they, there will be at some point a broader audience to see that. But on the first level, he was addressing to me, like uh, his daughter, like, look, this is uh, where I sleep. Look, this uh, is uh, these are my uh, beehives. Um, and uh, it, it was like he was introducing me uh, in this space, um, which, of course, I knew very well. But in the in the last years, I've like lost all the contact with it and uh, he wanted me to to see all of it and to understand uh, how's his life going and uh, what is he doing and uh, all the things that um, I don't know are part of his uh, life now 
and um, for me it's not about that much about isolate isolation but it's about finding a balance because you see him with uh, with his colleagues in the town uh, with his actual job and uh, um, the social life he was uh, very part of and uh, in the same time his need to make his own space and uh, have uh, his time uh, working alone and uh, reading and uh, um, yeah he he's saying actually in the film that uh, he needs this balance and uh, he's trying very much to find it thank you Thank you for that. Um, and I wonder if maybe we'll have one more question and then switch it up or open it up. Um, leave, leave, leave the others that I had for if there is room. Um, but obviously, you know, you're, you're bringing up this, this topic about mental health and stigmatization of, of it um, and kind of um, working with your film against that. Um, and I wonder if I can ask a question of just a bigger one of where do you see the discourse of mental health right now in Romania, right? Um, here in the US, right? I, the, the millennials at Gen Z, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of kind of openness and fluidity about mental health. If anything, it's, it's a prominent discourse. Um, um even among you know um generations that are older than that um where is that in romania in, from what you're observing and um noticing you know in the public discourse also in in your life uh well i think there are social bubbles you know in the artistic world uh, of course the discourse it's uh, you, we talk a lot, a lot about that and very openly and you see it everywhere but again we're just a bubble the whole other world i don't know on tv or i don't know mainstream media uh the discourse it's you know very stigmatizing um but i wanted to to say that actually the um, the fight against stigmatization it's just the tip of the iceberg because, of course, it helps a lot. I mean, it's it's very important, but um, I think that we should go further. Um, and for some illnesses, uh, the chronic ones mainly um, need social services. I mean, I think that this is the huge topic because um, the, the medical system it's very under uh, under budgeted and uh, psychiatry is all, always on the last uh, place and um, i think that this is the the main problem actually because uh, you know like social uh, social discourse it's one thing but uh, these people need assistance i mean this is uh, this is very important for me and I think that we kind of forgot that and uh, make everything uh, at some level be about identities and about um, uh, discourse which again are very important but are only the the top of it there's a lot more to to deal uh, to deal with after that and how how was the experience so far in showing the film or uh, kind of being part of this um, kind of public thinking through um, mental health, right? Thinking through it, I guess, you know, at the level of policies, as you're suggesting, thinking of it as the level of consciousness, thinking of it at the level of the, the politics, right? Uh, just it's a so much so interesting how many films have come lately about you know my you know migration and family life and the disintegration of you know um, 
or or the struggles right that people have with social uh, support right because of economic political conditions that create the conditions for mental health um, so I guess when when you have been part of these conversations with your film um, how have you experienced those conversations are they are they bringing people into all of these areas or is that a little harder to go and to nudge the conversation towards yeah i think that the film can uh, can build a safe space and people really open up um, maybe because it's so intimate and uh, after the film they they feel the need to share as well and uh, yeah they, they get very emotional usually uh, but I also had uh, screenings with a specialist from hospitals and um, the, there were also good reactions and um, yeah now I'm trying to get in the university and the um, medical school to show it to students and talk about to um, see how they react to, um, but it's very interesting for me and I think that the film has uh, this power to start the discussion and to create a safe space for everyone to to discuss things. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that, the circulation of it in different spaces that I would not have imagined, but like such a great, such a great idea to take it to uh, public um, health um, workers. Um, it's about 35, 37 minutes after, so I don't want to monopolize the discussion and want to open to a few of us here. Um, of course, I have other questions that, you know, we can get into more into the, the, the meat of the film. Um, but I'm curious if any other of us here may have um, their own comments or questions to bring up. I, I have a question, if I may, and, and, and actually to continue the conversation you just had with Alina about um, about uh, the movie in the public space, basically. So um, if I understand correctly, um, you started the movie as a more of a, a, a more of a personal um, exploration, right? And then um, somehow it was it, it grew into this. Um, you you call it somewhere a cultural intervention, right? In a in a in a society, and I want to emphasize this uh, to to be able to offer context in a society where people don't talk too much about mental health, where um, where to to go to to go to seek out help for mental health is a sign of weakness, right? So this it's a taboo subject and um and and everything that comes with it, right? Um so um I'm I'm wondering about how um and, and it also sounds like this intervention is not over yet because you were talking about all of these spaces where you want where you um take your movie to to um um, um raise awareness and to open that conversation you you talked about so i'm wondering about this this i guess movement or growing from a personal e exploration to actually uh, uh pushing the movie into the public space in these multiple ways and to grow into as you called it an intervention Actually, I think that my father was the, the first one uh, who saw it that way. Uh, it took me a while, but uh, at some point he realized that, uh, I don't know, if, if a public will see him on the screen, um, he started to think about what things he has to say to that public and from his position uh, what what lessons can he can he teach to other people to help them um, people maybe struggling with uh, with the same uh, issues and also people I don't know who who had friends struggling with it but I don't know as well as random people 
Uh, so, um, yeah, my father started to think that way and I just uh, went further. Um, I have a question as well. Um, well, two questions, I guess. My first question, which was kind of like a burning question as soon as I finished watching the documentary is, how is your father actually doing? Um, and then my second question is whether he had any uh, input into how the documentary was edited uh, or if that was just all left to you. Well, uh, after uh, you saw on the ending on the film that things got worse and um, yeah, it's things are not okay and I won't elaborate further. Uh, and about the second question, uh, my father saw the film like from the very first uh, version of editing and uh, he was very much part of the process. Of course, the, the film is mainly from my perspective, uh, but uh, he was also there. Um, at some point, he was uncomfortable with some things that he was saying, and uh, we cut it out those uh, sequences from the film. Uh, so he was very much part of the process. Thank you. Um, can I make a comment? I don't. I don't think it's a question. It's more of a comment. Um, um, also, you know, because I was talking about um, this this um, dynamic between uh, personal and and public, and and the difficulty of this. Um, I I I just think that um, um, what you are doing and what you both you and your father are doing with the movie i really think it's very 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 brave so um and i'm imagining that it's um at, at many level taking a toll on you as as you're you go you're going through these conversations so so you know it, it, again it's a it's a very public way of of showing this right because say you wrote a book right a book is read in 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 the intimacy but a movie is seen in such a in such a public way right so um um i i think that's what i wanted to say that it, it's it, it's unbelievably brave uh from from both of you to to be doing this and and um and I'm wondering how much, um, well, I guess the question comes now, <laughs> I'm wondering um, how much, um, I'm hoping, no, I'm not wondering, so no question. <laughs> I'm hoping that, that this means something for people around you and that this is actually catal catalyzing this conversation about um, mental health in, in new ways in Romania and that it's energizing um, um, some, some, um, not just conversations, but, um, actions and, and ways of thinking and, and, and ways of being around the topic and, and through the topic or through, um, the issues that come with mental health. It is actually kind of surprising because, um, a, a film goes to festivals and cinemas and all of that for one year, most of them. And uh, for us against us, I think that uh, the second year just ended and a lot of screening invitations are just starting. I mean, a lot of people uh, have seen the film in, uh, in the screenings that we organized, but now we're receiving invitations from some of them uh, to to screen the film in their communities and take it further and to discuss it with their communities and it's amazing uh, and I'm uh, I'm very happy about this. So it does sound like you're creating a movement. <laughs> there's there's a communication scholar bias, the rhetoricians bias. We we want. We want, we want, or, or not bias, but desire, I guess, right? The desire for more, for, um, yeah. I, I, one thing that came up for me as I was watching and that impressed me was the, the gaze 
in your film plays a lot with the gaze, right? Because it's the two of you filming each other and, and the voice, right? And one way in which I watched the film, I watched it many times, <laughs> but just today I was watching it without looking. I was just listening to it, right? Um, turn the screen around and just how tender your voices were, right? And then also how tender the gazes of the camera, right? Like, you know, and when, when we teach, we teach about, uh, of course, you know, the, the male gaze, the female gaze, you know, response to the feminist scholarship. And just, I love the way your work models, especially about um, father-daughter relationships, right? Or family relationships, um, a tenderness that um, part, partly, there's something very Romanian about it, right? Uh, in the, in, you know, the, or maybe to my ear now, <laughs> right? Like the, the, the language is just so, um, um, so tender. Um, but then also the way in which you both sort of alternate with this very open curiosity and just very, um, invitational way of just looking at each other and discovering each other and and, and then yeah the documentary sort of shows this process of discovery and the kind of the back and forth of the human with their boundaries who feels like the discovery is too much right and then you know recoils a little bit right especially that that scene about when you're talking about you know plan versus process you know and like there, there was like this generational differences mapped onto that as well right you could see your dad as somebody socialized through communism and its talk and you know and you as your generation um so i don't know if there's a question here but i just wanted to to highlight just how tender this film is and, and probably that's what to many speaks as as a film where you can kind of pause and reflect and um so I guess maybe I do have a question. It's like, have you how have you cultivated that purposefully, if at all, um, at the editing level? I know in, in other interviews you, you talked about how you created it intentionally, this pauses, right, of no dialogue, of just observing, right? For me, when I was watching with the, the screen turned around <laughs> and turned away, I was even more aware of those pauses as allowing me to just like think through, right? And take in, maybe not even think through, but emotionally take in the, um, the exchange. Yeah, thank you for bringing this up uh, because this exchange of gazes uh, was very important for me as well. And uh, it was one of the first things that I decided about this film because uh, uh, after seeing the VHS tapes that I mentioned, uh, my first thought was to go at my father's and uh, film him, uh, like to return the, the thing that he did for me when I was little. Now, now as an adult, to go there and to return this, uh, um, this, uh, this thing. And um, after that, I had this idea that he loved to film at some point and maybe if i'm going there with two cameras and uh, give him one of uh, one of the cameras he would uh, he would like to try it again and uh, that that how everything started this exchange of perspectives um that's how it started and um I didn't uh, know from the beginning that I want to keep both of the cameras all time on the screen. I mean, in the beginning, I thought that I in the editing room, I will uh, switch between the two shots. But uh, when I first saw them together, I realized that this is actually the film to see all the reactions in the same time. And uh, as a viewer, you get to choose where to look. Yeah. 
Lovely. Um, we still have a little bit of time for questions, but it, while people are thinking through that, if others come up, um, I feel like I'm torn in asking this question because I also think, so there's, here's the tornness. I like Marie Louise. Um, I do think that this is such a brave type of work, right? because you're exposed all the time right and because you you have to talk about it as as the filmmaker right like you you get to and then it's part of the way the films get circulated where you come and you talk to us like you are today and and, and there's also this part of me where you i don't want to i don't want to ask the filmmaker because they are a woman about the emotional life of the documentary making right i mean um maybe I would have asked a man as well. However, there's also this part of me that recognizing the bravery um, and the courage it takes to kind of create this, this type of film is thinking, what does it mean for you to, to make films about loss and grief, right? Because you made the one about losing your grandmother and you know, you're making the one, you've made this one about your father and then you know kind of thinking through spiritual or uh, intellectual parenting right like you know your advisor from ma um you know Vintela Mihailescu also passed recently and then the pandemic came right so there's just I, i'm thinking of the artist's role in articulating and and helping us deal with grief and at the same time you as an artist are experiencing a lot of that in the context of you know all of us magnifying our grief because of the losses of the pandemic so um yeah i guess my question is like how are you dealing with all of that and is grief kind of your topic next or like or or like how is that allowing how where is creativity sort of pulling you under the covers and layers of all of this personal and social losses That makes sense. Uh, I think that, I don't know, film and photography um, are very related to loss and to grief because in a way you film something to keep it with you, you know, and uh, uh, it has to do a lot with uh, having something and then losing it and trying to keep, preserve a memory of it. And uh, for me it's very natural to to use film and photography this way and uh, to express myself this way and even to organize things in my head and uh, to to put together things that are happening to me um so the harder question for me was uh, why and if i should um I should take these films further to an audience. I mean, making them is the first level and it comes very naturally and uh, that's it. But are they supposed to be seen by other people or not? And that was uh, always a hard question. And I think the, the answer is very much about how, uh, how these films can help other people. Uh, and help them, I don't know, communicate, express their own feelings, face their own feelings. And um, yeah, the discussions are very emotional all the time. So I think that the, the films can open up this kind of space. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, we only have a few minutes left, so I want to make sure that I leave time for any 
Any last questions or comments? I actually have a question and I'm moving. Sorry, because I have <laughs> I have some things happening in the background. So um I I I think I'm I'm trying to move the conversation or to to also show maybe the bright side of it. So one of the things that you mentioned, and, and again, maybe it's not a question, but um, it might um, um, move you to um, talk further a little bit about this. Part, part, part of what you mentioned was that you have, and I really like how you said this, you have discovered in, in those VHS tapes um, memories that I didn't remember anymore. And that the 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 tapes look new to you, and that you've discovered how it was your father who kind of encouraged this passion in you. So um, I think there is also this um, luminous, right? Like like light, not light, um, bright side of of this process. Um, and and that was um, that was in, interesting to me. So yes, preservation of memories, but you talk about photography as you know you start taking photos to preserve memories, keep things I enjoyed. This is what you said earlier. Yeah, of course, and uh, the discovery of of these tapes. What uh, was huge also because I discovered my father in ways that I didn't remember anymore. And uh, he was a very nice father actually. <laughs> and, um, and discovering also my mom uh, in a different way. I mean, everything, the whole process actually, not just the tapes helped me um, understand better my parents and uh, see parts of them which I didn't see before. Thank you. Well, Andra, I, I think you've left us with a lot to think about <laughs> and also with the desire to keep watching this film because it feels like one that we want to come back to again and again and again. It, there's always more there. A little bit like like your archival work, right? At the museum, it feels like you can always go back to this film and find something and and hear something in a new in a new way. And of course, that's that's the case with many films, but I think yours in particular. Um, I appreciate you being here with us tonight. Um, thank you for sharing a little more of yourself and of your work and of your thoughts. Um, are there any any last questions? Maybe any, are there any questions you have for us? <laughs> Since you have a captive uh, audience here, that or maybe any question that uh, you may have for um, the students who may be watching this later. Um, that that would be engaging with with your film at other times um i don't know if, if questions but maybe an invitation uh because i think that film as a medium uh can uh, can set up this context to to have this kind of conversations with your family or with uh i don't know a context for um very sincere discussions because of this convention you know because you're, you're thinking that you're in a convention and it's like a game and um this actually as fake as it can look actually um leaves space for for very sincere opening up and um yeah, so it's an invitation to experiment and to try to communicate with uh, with those around you. That is such a a great invitation. Yeah. So thank you for for having me here, and congratulations for what you're doing. And um, thank you.
thank you for your film and for being with us today. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Um, so thank you again, Andra and Alina for the discussion. Um, and I invite everyone else that's watching this later to, um, yeah, go ahead and stream the film um, on through our eventive page. Um, it's available through November 27th. Um, thank you again. And I hope you'll join us tomorrow. We're going to have a, a discussion with uh, director uh, Raluca Durbaka of the Certainty of Probabilities is going to be at 10 a.m. PST. Thank you again, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Thank you.